Welcome to another video for valuation of bonds and shares. In this video, we will understand the concepts of yield to maturity for a bond. Now the yield of a bond can be calculated in three different ways. These three different ways are 1. Yield to maturity. Second, yield to call. And third is current yield. So in this video, we'll focus on yield to maturity. Now consider the case of the following bond. The face value or par value is 1000 rupees. Coupon rate or interest rate is 10%. The tenure is 14 years. The market price is 14 94.93 rupees and the bond will be redeemed at par. So the bond will be redeemed at par means at maturity the investor will get back the par value which is 1000 rupees. So as you have already understood from the previous videos the buyer of the bond will have to pay rupees 1,494.93 to the seller. So his investment is this amount here. Now the interest of 10% will be calculated on 100 rupees and that is the amount which will be paid back to the investor. However, the investment from the investor is this amount here. So we have to find out what is the rate of return that the investor is going to get on his investment of this amount. The returns will include 10% of 1000 rupees as the interest and the maturity value which he is going to get at the end of the tenure. Now this rate of return that we are going to find out is known as the yield to maturity. So basically what will be the yield of the bond till the time it matures. And the yield to maturity considers both the interest income and any capital gains or loss. So let us represent this bond on a time scale. So as shown on this time scale, basically the interest that the investor is going to get will be 10% of 1000, which is 100 rupees at the end of every year. And at the end of the tenure, he will also get back the maturity value, which is 1000 rupees. The market price of the bond, which the investor will have to pay in order to buy the bond is 1494.93. And we have to find out the yield to maturity or the rate of return. So the yield to maturity or rate of return will be the percentage at which the discounted value of the returns equals the investment. So basically the present value of all of these cash flows needs to be found out.
let's say this is PV1, PV2, this will be PV13, PV14, PV15. So the addition of all of these present values will be equal to this value of the bond at the rate of return. In other words, the yield to maturity is the rate of return at which the discounted value of the cash inflows is equal to the investments. This calculation reminds me of the internal rate of return calculation which is discussed in detail in the capital budgeting chapter. So please refer to those videos as well. Now the negative sign is only symbolic to show that this is an outflow while the positive signs show that these are cash inflows. So basically here let's say this is B0. So B0 is equal to PV1 plus PV2 plus PV13 plus PV14 plus PV15. Now the value of B0 is 1494.93 and this is equal to 100 divided by 1 plus YTM plus 100 divided by 1 plus YTM square and so on plus 100 divided by 1 plus YTM to the power 13 plus 100 divided by 1 plus YTM to the power 14 plus now the maturity value which is 1000 divided by 1 plus YTM to the power 14. Now this will have to be calculated by trial and error method and the value that you'll get for yield to maturity is 5%. Now I want to talk about a very interesting fact here. So let's go back to the time scale. Now we have this as yield to maturity and in the videos for bonds with maturity we have kept this as KD which is the required rate of return. Now the interesting fact is that the yield to maturity is generally the same as the value of KD which is basically the market rate. Because basically this value here 1494.93 gets decided by the market rate. So as we had seen in the videos for bond with maturity, in order to find the present value of the bond, basically we discount the cash flows which are going to be received by the required rate of return or the market rate. So whatever rate is prevalent in the market or being offered by other bonds. Now once you have achieved the present value of the bond. Now we are trying to find the yield to maturity. Now yield to maturity is again the same thing. We are equating the present value of the bond with the future cash inflows of the bond and the rate which makes them equal is the yield to maturity. So basically these two will be the same. Now we can also have the case of a perpetual bond. So what are perpetual bonds? 
a perpetual bond is a bond with no maturity date these bonds are not redeemable but keep on paying a steady stream of interest forever so if i try to draw the time scale the time scale will be something like this so 0 1 2 3 and so on so there is no maturity date the interest let's say is 100 and let's say the present value will be 1494.93 this is just an example and this here will be yield to maturity now if you recall the videos covered on perpetuity in the chapter time value of money you will note that the present value of perpetuity is equal to the perpetuity amount divided by interest rate this amount which is being paid on a regular basis is known as the perpetuity amount so basically in our case this is nothing but the present value of the bond and this is nothing but the interest that we are getting and interest rate is nothing but the yield to maturity so in this example 1494.93 is equal to 100 divided by yield to maturity or yield to maturity is equal to 100 divided by 1494.93 or yield to maturity is equal to 0 0.0668 which is same as 6.68 percent.